This may look like a really simple page, but there is something that makes it really interesting. It was built completely using Lisp lists. Maybe you have never seen a template like this before, but if you know some HTML, I think that you can imagine what it does. You may wonder why it is so powerful. The reason is that it is Lisp, and so we can use all the tools we know, like macros. When designing a web application, one needs to build some HTML. In Lisp, designing an HTML template system is really simple. One is only required to write some macros to create a particular domain-specific language. We will use a package that already does this. It is known as CLU and can be loaded with QuickLisp. We will also need a web server to show on the browser what we have produced using CLU. A common web server for Lisp is Hunchartoot. So we start by loading CLU and Hunchartoot. Let's define a new package and we load all the symbols from CLU and Hunchartoot. We move in the new package and we tell CLU to use HTML version 5. We can start by writing a simple about page. That is, we write a function that returns the HTML as a string. It may look a little bit strange, but this is usual HTML. There is the HTML tag with inside the head and the body. With HTML output to string, in particular, we are telling CLU to generate the first line, the doc type, and then to indent the code, which makes it more easy to read when we print on the screen. Let's compile it and we try to run the function. We have to move to the current package. And this is exactly what we expected. We want the basic structure of the page to be shared across the site. For example, there will always be the HTML with inside the head, uh, there will probably be some uh, metadata in the head, and then what really changes is the content of the body. In Lisp, we can implement the template using macros. We write a macro that builds the list required by CLU. The macro could look like this. It takes as input the title of the page and what to put inside the body and it generates the HTML head and body tags. Now the about page is much simpler. We just call the main layout, passing the title of the page and what to put inside the body. Now we want to be able to test this page using the browser. The easiest way is to start a web server that provides it. As we said, we will use Hunchentooth. We can start the web server using start make instance and then we will use an easy acceptor. Using the fine easy handler is really simple to start a new page. We just have to tell him the URI in which we want to provide the page and then the HTML that we want to write on it. In particular, we are using CLU to generate it. We are currently using the port 8080. So let's start a browser and look at the address localhost on port 8080. The result should be something like this. Now we can improve the page by adding some CSS. Bulma is a common CSS library that lets any developer make a nice site without having to deal too much with CSS. So we can change the main layout and make it include the CSS library. The structure is the same as before, but we have added some meta information and then, in particular, the CSS file. We can compile it. Now we have to compile the function again. When we use function, we have just to compile a specific function and all the other that calls it will call the new version. With macros, it is different. We have usually to compile all the functions that use it again. 
if we look at the documentation, we will see that we have to use some specific classes to make the title look good. Now let's try to create another page. The contacts page will have the same structure as the current one, but we will put also a form in which the user can send us a message. We can already see the title and a simple message with our email. Now to add the form, we have to look at the documentation of Bulma to see some example on how to use the classes that it provides. When using CSS libraries, it is convenient to copy and paste snippets from the official site. The problem is that all examples are written in pure HTML, while we are using CLU. A possible solution is to use a project like this. When you load it, it starts a web server with a text area in which you can put some HTML and it returns the same structure using CLU. To use it, you just have to clone it in some path known to ASDF. For example, if you are using Portacol, you can use the project directory. Then you can read the name of the project inside the ASD file, which is htmlconv. And finally, you can start it from the command line using ASDF load system and then the name of the system HTML conv. It just started our web server on localhost and port 3333. For example, I want a text field like this one. So I have just to copy all this HTML inside the text area and ask him to convert it. And finally, I can copy and paste it inside the protocol. Inside the form. I can remove the la this last paragraph and the icon. Rename the label the default value and is success. Now let's add also a text area. For example, we can use this one. Copy. Finally, we need a submit button. I can remove the cancel button. Let's try to compile it and reach the page in the browser. And we have finished the form. Layouts become really useful when we have some complex content shared between pages, like a navigation bar. Let's try to do a navigation bar using Bulma. You can look at the documentation of Bulma and search for some inspiration on how to do it. This is a simple example. You may notice that this is a function, but this function will be executed at compile time. The main layout becomes something like this. We can see that during expansion we call the navbar function 
and we put the list that it generates in at the beginning of the body. This way, when CLU will convert the HT, the list in HTML, the code of the number will have already been executed. Now we have to compile again also the about. Now we have to compile again the contacts page. And we can see that uh, there is the navbar at the top. We can see that the about page does not have the navbar. This is because we haven't compiled the function again. If I load the page again, we can see that the navbar appears. We can do one last improvement to this page. And in particular, I would like the current page to be of another color inside the navbar. We have to improve the code of the navbar. We need a list with all the links inside the navbar. We can use a list of dotted pairs in which the first element is the link it will point to, while the second is the text of the link. Inside the navbar, we need to know which page we are currently in. So we have to add a parameter to the navbar and we have to change the class of a link. We can generate the links iterating over the navbar links. This code will have to be executed. In particular, we will generate a list of links. And so we have to put the at such that it will remove the external list and leave only the, the links. We can use the destructuring and uh, extract link and title for each element of the list. And basically, we want to generate this A. So we have to quote it and replace the link with the variable link and the title with the variable title. Finally, we have to change the class and all the links will have the navbar item class. The one which represent the current page will also have the is active class. For example, we can use concatenate. We want to concatenate some strings. The first class will always be navbar item. While the other will only be shown when the current URL will be equal to the link. In particular, we will have to put a space and then it's active. Pay attention that this code is executed only at compile time. Now we have to change the code of main layout and make it pass the URL that we have to provide to main layout from the handler. So we have also to change the contacts page and the about page. Now we can try it and we can see that it works. The current page is more black than the other. For today, this is all. Let me know in the comments if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.
Thanks for watching.